Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone out there in Facebook land. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Luis Reyes, your exchange's senior enlisted advisor. I am so pumped today because we got a fellow chief, and not just any chief, a big time chief today. But before we get to him, let me introduce my co host, Julie Mitchell, Leah Matthews. Ladies, how are you doing today? Doing really good. Nice to see you guys again. Hi, Chief. Doing good. Yep. All right. Good to hey, see you guys get... today. Awesome. Let's get this pumped up. Julie, you mind introducing our guest? We are truly honored to host today's guest. He enlisted in the Air Force in 1989 and has deployed in support of Operations Desert Storm and Desert Shield and Enduring Freedom. Now, he is the personal advisor to the Chief of Staff and the Secretary of the Air Force on all issues regarding the welfare, readiness, morale, and proper utilization and progress of the enlisted force. Please help us welcome the 18th Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, Right. <laughs> Chief Wright, Chief Wright, Chief Wright, Chief, 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 Chief Wright, Chief Wright, Chief Wright in the house, <laughs> making it happen. <laughs> well, hey, thank you guys for having me on your show, man. This is exciting. Chief Wright, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to join us. We're super excited to have you and honored to have you on. For everybody watching, drop a note in the comments. Let us know where you're watching from. And if you have any questions for Chief Wright, we'll be reading those throughout the live broadcast. Now is a good time to start your watch party to enjoy this live interview with your friends. And if you're not already following us, you should because Chief Chats are every Tuesday and Thursday and sometimes Wednesdays like today. Um, and you'll know who's coming up next. Hey, well, let's get this going. Chief Master Sergeant Air Force Wright is in the house. Thank you for taking time to join us today. As Julie mentioned earlier, it truly is an honor to have you with us. And of course, it means a lot to all the viewers out there. You know, the soldiers, airmen, sailors, Marines, family members, Coasties, everyone out there. It's great to see you again. I know it's been a while. I think the last time I saw you might've been, oof, last year at a board meeting around there, or it could have been at a Army, was it the Ar uh, Air Force Army game at the Academy? Yeah, yeah, that's right. yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> so there's a lot going on in the world since the last time we caught up. How have you been? Uh, so, yeah, hey, man, I've been doing really well. Um, you know, I'm about two weeks out from from retirement and, and swapping out with uh, Chief Master Sergeant Air Force number 19, Joe Bass. And uh, so, you know, as you can imagine, with any transition, uh, certainly with a, a transition out of the military, you know, working VA issues and trying to get all that stuff together. And then uh, really, I've spent the majority of the time just um, with my team uh, prepping uh, Chief Bass's team for a good and smooth handoff. And and uh, and I've also spent just a little bit of time, you know, thinking about uh, my, my next job and, and what I have to do next. So uh, but overall, my life has been good. I have no regrets. Um, I'm in good health. Uh, I feel good. I'm excited about the transition. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's been great. Well, hey, that, that's, that's awesome, Chief, right? So you told us a little bit about the future. Let's, let's take it back for a lot. You know, we have a vast audience out there, uh, uh, multi-service uh, audience. So tell us a little bit about yourself and your role in the United States Air Force. Yeah, so again, I'm uh, Khalid Wright. I go by K Wright. I've uh, been in the Air Force almost 32 years now. I'm getting ready to retire and uh, take over as the CEO of our Air Force Aid Society. You know, I started off as a as a dental tech and, um, and and you know worked my way up through through the ranks and and was given some opportunities. Had a lot of great mentors who helped me uh, along the way. And uh, so yeah, it's been it's been fantastic. You know, my role now. Um, just like the senior enlisted uh, advisor of all the other services, Sergeant Major of the Army, Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps, Master Chief Petty Officer of the Navy, Master Chief Petty Officer of the Coast Guard, and now the Chief Master Sergeant of the Space Force. Um, you know, our roles are to advise our bosses, the Chief of Staff and uh, the Secretary of our respective services on any and all issues uh, impacting enlisted, enlisted airmen. And it's not really, it's really not just um, limited to enlisted airmen. Our bosses call on us for all kinds of issues, officer, civilian, um, you know, in, in anybody that our uh, services are actually responsible for. So, uh, you know, I've been doing that for almost four years now. And like I said, I'll transition in, in, in two weeks. 
and uh, where I'll get to take a little bit of time off and relax a bit and play play some golf and enjoy life uh, before I start the next next phase of life. So, but I but I've had just a wonderful uh, career. Been a lot of places. Been all over the world. Uh, uh, stationed in in some places all over the world, and then travel for for Air Force business, um, just about everywhere you can think of. So it's it's just been a fantastic opportunity. I wouldn't trade it for the world. Man. And then part of your current role means you get to be a member of the exchange's board of directors. So yeah. we always we always try to educate folks and remind them that the exchange is part of the Department of Defense. We're not a private retailer or a contractor, and we just celebrated 125 years of service just the other day. So can you tell us a little bit about what you do on the board and how this helps Air Force communities? Yeah, so uh, on the, um, the AFES uh, Board of Directors, you know, part of my role is uh, making sure that um, the decisions that are made for AFES that might impact not only how uh, service members go about, you know, shopping and buying gas and all of the things that from a retail perspective that AFES does, but, but also uh, providing the checks and balances for the financials and making sure that, um, that the organization, the CEO and the rest of the organization uh, are being good stewards of uh, the money that they earn, uh, making sure that um, the dividend that AFES provides to both the Army and the Air Force is um, is balanced. That that because it does come with a with with a balance. Sometimes, uh, certainly, the dividend helps uh, all of our bases, um, but but it also restricts. A fees from being able to do some of the other things that, that they may need to do at, at, at times. So, um, you know, I, I take that responsibility uh, very, very seriously as a board member. And uh, I genuinely enjoy attending uh, the meetings. I attended my last uh, meeting virtually uh, just, just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but I also enjoyed, uh, you guys gave me an opportunity to come down and see the A fees campus. And I just had yes. a, a blast meeting everybody. <laughs> You know, so that was really good. I would encourage uh, any airman, not just you don't have to be the chief master of the Air Force or sorry, major of the Army, uh, but any airman or soldier uh, should take the opportunity to go down and visit the campus and kind of see what ATHES is all about. We love having visitors. So that's that's great advice. Love that. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to post we're some back throwback. in the building. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to post some throwback photos of when you were here. I'm going to go yeah. post that yeah. so people can see. <laughs> nice. Excellent. And Chief Wright, you've talked a lot about your career um, and your time spent in the Air Force. So as you're reflecting on that, can you think about a time that the exchange was there for you during your service? And why does this support matter to airmen and soldiers? Yeah. So, you know, I've always uh, uh, during my entire time in the Air Force, I've always uh, depended on uh, AFES and, and the benefits of, of AFES. I've had a um, a DPP slash military star <laughs> uh, time that I, I joined the Air Force. I wasn't always responsible with it when I was a, a, a young guy, but um, and then I, I would say the most important time was when I was uh, deployed early in my career and then deployed late in my career. Just uh, having having a fees there was just a huge huge benefit to be able to get you know the basic stuff that that you need. Uh, in Saudi Arabia or in Afghanistan, and and uh, you know I was very very thankful for all the AFES facilities, and and I'm thankful for uh, AFES, uh, you know, being able to. Uh, I think your part one of your models is we go where you go, right? So everywhere we have sure. service members, uh, AFES finds a way to get them the things that they need, uh, and and in almost all cases in a timely manner, and not allowing time, space, distance. Uh, to get in the way of that. So uh, I'm very appreciative. Well, awesome. That's, that's great. You know, that's a common theme across, you know, when you talk to most people, you know, uh, the, we go where you go, model, where they've been deployed to, and they're always excited, you know, when, when all oh, the BX is there, I get to have, you know, a Snickers bar or, or a Coke or, you know, Monster or Burger King pops up, just something simple, something small makes, you know, puts a smile on people's faces. Um, but let's talk about that. I just brought up burgers and, and, and snacks, but 2020 has been quite a year so far. Let's talk about being fit to fight and why this means so much right now, especially with a lot of people staying home. What advice do you have for everyone out there uh, with regards to staying physic with regards to physically staying in shape? 
and what they can do, you know, during this pandemic, who knows how much longer we'll be working from home. Yeah, so I, I think it's important for all of us, uh, certainly me, I, I turn 50 years old tomorrow, but- uh, oh, Happy birthday. Happy early birthday. Yay. Happy birthday. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> but it's important for all of our, our service members to, to remain not just physically uh, healthy, but mentally, spiritually, and socially, you know, I, I'm, I'm always preaching about those those pillars of resilience. Um, but uh, physical health, I, I think you can uh, solve a lot of uh, life's ills uh, just with uh, what you put in your body and the amount of time you spend uh, exercising. And so, I know it can be challenging uh, during during these times when a lot of the fitness centers have been closed down and people are. Uh, Forced to forced to stay at home, but uh, there's there's always a way, right? As long as you can find you a little bit of space, you can do some high intensity interval training. You know, I'm a, a jump roper, so all I need mm. is a, a few feet of space, and I can I can jump rope. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough to be able to purchase a, a Peloton bike, and I know not everyone uh, oh. has has a bike, but um, you know, there's there's certain things. If you want to be fit, I think you can you can find a way. Uh, to get out and walk uh, or run or you know, uh, do certain types of exercises. And, and, I, and I say one of, the, one of the good things is uh, having an accountability partner, right? It makes it just so much easier when those days you don't want to get out of bed, uh, having somebody uh, either call you or knowing that, hey, if I don't get up, then uh, Lou is going to give me a hard time for not showing up. <laughs> <laughs> it's obviously, you know, clearly it's important to the readiness of our, our military in order to do the things that, that we do. And it doesn't matter if you're a special operator or if you're an Intel analyst or uh, a services airman who sits behind a desk all day. Uh, I think being physically he healthy, it, you know, it, it leads to mental clarity. It, it helps in so many different ways. And so uh, I would just encourage all of our service members to uh, make their physical health a priority, just like their mental and spiritual health. Yeah, I heard I heard that Peloton is pretty serious. A lot of my neighbors have it and they yeah. enjoy riding the bike. And, you know, it's kind of like you said, the accountability partner piece, right? That's your accountability partner. Because when you get on there, you got coaches and yeah. people, you know, pushing you and they're like, hey, you're not going. And somehow they know if you're not, you know, your, your resistance isn't up to where it's supposed to be. I don't <laughs> know how they know all that, but they got ideas, you know. <laughs> but I like to tell people also, if you don't have a Peloton, right, they got YouTube. They got so many at-home workouts, yeah. full-body yeah. workouts. You can just hit click and follow, you know, uh, uh, follow the guy along or the girl along and just do a workout at home. So a yeah. uh, great advice. For regards you know, to, to be honest, I, I think this is more a conversation of will and not means, right? So there's, like mm -hmm. you said, there's so many <clears throat> things that you can do. Uh, you just have to drum up the will and the desire to want to to, to do it. And, and I'm not saying that that's easy. It's not always easy for me. Uh, but that's where, I, you know, if I were, um, um, you know, uh, teaching or coaching, I focus more on on will than, than the means. So eating well, obviously goes hand in hand with fitness. What does nutrition look like for you? And why are initiatives like Air Force Smarter Fueling? Why does that matter? And why is it so important? Yeah, because just like I was just mentioning, um, not only um, working out and, and taking care of your body, but uh, part of taking care of your body is is minding what you put in your body. I've, I've uh, you know, what it looks healthy eating for me, you know, I've, I've experimented with being a, a vegan, uh, which didn't last long at all. Uh, <laughs> I did. It's just too, I mean, uh, and I, I, I give a lot of credit to folks who are, are vegan uh, because it's a lot of work to, to make sure you understand uh, what, what has any form of animal uh, meat or fat or milk or whatever in it. Um, I did vegetarian for a while and, and that seemed to be okay. Uh, I settled in for a pretty extended a couple of years as a, as a pescatarian where uh, my wife and I only ate fish. And then just recently I've added some meat back to, to, to my diet and, um, and so, you know, I like to experiment with with different different things, and uh, and do what what gives me the best best results. But but I would just tell you, uh, especially as a person who grew up in the South and watching my uh, parents and grandparents and and siblings eat a lot of unhealthy and fried and and uh, you know uh, 
foods that just aren't aren't that great for you and and end up with high blood pressure and high blood cholesterol and, and that type of stuff. So I'm very, very um, mindful of, you know, what I fuel my body with. And, and I think for airmen and, and soldiers, they have to, they have to be the same. It's just, it's too easy. So um, there's a, and we talk about this in board meetings sometimes, both for AFES and, and DECA, there's this, uh, you know, we have all these healthy uh, eating uh, initiatives, but we also have, uh, up in the front displays Doritos and Twinkies and, and, and things that aren't necessarily that, that, that good for you. So um, again, I go back to will versus means. Um, just because that stuff is there doesn't mean that, that, that you need it. Uh, there's different ways you can uh, get caffeine to, to, uh, to help you stay awake if you're working a long shift uh, besides drinking uh, monsters and, and some of those things that are that are full of energy, but uh, it just takes a little bit of education on the part of uh, our airmen and, and us as leaders, right? We have a responsibility to educate folks about what healthy eating looks like. Excellent. And you've talked a lot about whole body um, and all of that. So I know it's been a challenging year for many of us. Um, do you have any tips or any advice for people to stay mentally fit and resilient during these tough times? Yeah. So I, so I think uh, what I would encourage people do to do from a um, uh, from mental fitness uh, standpoint is uh, to find some, something that centers you, whatever that might be for me is meditation. And so uh, in the mornings I, I, I wake up and, and just for sometimes it's uh, anywhere from four to seven minutes of meditation, just to kind of center myself and, and one, clear my mind uh, before I start, uh, you know, uh, a busy day, just jumping right into things. Um, and so whatever that might be that, that centers you, it might be yoga, it might be exercise, it might be uh, meditation. Uh, and then same thing, I go back to having not necessarily an accountability partner, but having that person uh, that you trust that you can uh, talk to, that you can express your feelings to, that can help you work through uh, some of the challenges that can um, see the signs of, hey, I, I think you need to go see someone. I think you, I think you need help. Uh, but uh, mostly I think uh, managing your mental health is about self-reflection and just figuring out that whatever that thing is that helps you center uh, yourself. And, and there's also, I, I think, something that's good for our mental health that I've learned over the years, man, is, is uh, being grateful. Mm -hmm. and, and so sometimes, uh, you know, take, taking a, a moment uh, to tell people thank you, uh, to thank even whether it's, um, you know, whatever spiritual being you believe in, um, but, but, being grateful, I think, is a huge um, benefit to all of our mental health. And, and uh, so I, I'm always, every opportunity I get, large or small, man, I'm telling people, uh, thank you uh, for whatever it might be. Awesome. Well, well, thank you, Chief Wright, for coming on. Yeah. Mm, yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you guys for inviting me. Yeah. <laughs> I feel better already. Look at that. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Be grateful. So let's, let's switch gears right here. Let's talk about leadership style, right? And of course, everybody has had to adapt to the pandemic uh, and our leadership style during the pandemic. What has changed with how you lead, especially during this pandemic and not being able to, you know, to probably get in front of someone's face and kind of, you know, give that advice uh, face to face? Yeah, so fundamentally, you know, I think leadership styles transcend um, time and space and distance, right? So um, while I've had to do more meetings like this virtually and, and connect with my team uh, virtually, uh, my style hasn't changed. My style of being inclusive and collaborative and uh, engaging, I think, has, has largely stayed the same. And just because I think that's important uh, to empower people to be able to get after the things that they need to do. It's actually uh, this pandemic has helped me in a different way. Um, you know, I've told myself for many, many years, uh, and if you talk to successful people and leaders, one of the things that they'll tell you is, man, you have to learn to say no. 
Uh, you can't do everything. You can't commit to, to everything. And I just always had a hard time doing that because I always wanted to be there for people. Well, this pandemic uh, helped me uh, slow down and, 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 and kind of see the world. And it also, it, it, it forced and challenged me to, to start saying no to things, uh, to only uh, make the decisions that I need to make as as the chief uh, and delegating and allowing my team to, to get after a lot of things. But but I would I would say largely my style of leadership hasn't changed how I go about uh, motivating, encouraging and inspiring people. Uh, but the means, you know, by which we come together and, and discuss things, uh, you know, we, we had to adjust like everyone else to working from home and virtual meetings and things of that nature. You are getting a great reception on our live feed. You're getting a lot of little hearts and thumbs up, little some likes and loves. Yeah. <laughs> and I wanted to just share a couple of the comments with you. Um, Steve Richardson Jr. says you are awesome. And he is watching from McClellan Park, Sacramento, 364th rec recruiting squadron. Karen Anderson says, congrats on your upcoming retirement. We will miss you dropping by our store in the Pentagon. I believe she runs the military, our military clothing store yeah, there at the Ms. Pentagon. She, always, yeah. She's taking care of me. Yeah. <laughs> she says she will miss you. Um, a lot of happy birthdays coming through as well. And then Wayne Hodge says, I loved my 35 years with APHIS, and he appreciates all that you do to support military around the world. So yeah. just hey, wanted Reed. to share those with you. Hey, Julie, read that last comment from my, uh, my, my successor. So Kevin Chief, Osby. Os Chief Osby, who's going to be our new senior enlisted advisor here next month, says, great advice. You left a wonderful legacy and congrats on the retirement. You made a lot of decisions for our force. And one of them is being a Cowboys fan. All right. Is that Kevin? <laughs> Kevin Osby? It is Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Oh, Cowboys. <laughs> Yeah, he's <laughs> cowboy. I, I remember we were. He did an interview with uh, we had him in right. I was giving him some training. He came here, you know, to, to visit the TDY, and so we had him in with Latavius Murray, and he was talking some trash to him on the air. <laughs> about the and Latavius was like, "Hey man, you gotta get out of here with all that." Yeah, <laughs> called him a cowgirl fan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Osby's going to be a great fit, though, uh, for here. So, that, Lou, so what's, awesome. you, what's next for you, man? What are you doing? I'm going to Tyndall, Tyndall Air Force Base to be the group soup at the 325th Mission Support Group. So I'm going to work under one of your, uh, um, I think she used to be on your team, Command yeah, Chief uh, Katie Graven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah she's good. She's good. I like her. I like her very much. Yeah. Lots of good things. I heard great things about her. So I'm looking forward. I'll get there in about two weeks, two to three weeks. So I'm looking forward to it. And then Chief okay. Osby will come here and. It's going to be awesome. Good deal. It's good. It's going to be great. So you kind of talked about it, right? You head into retirement in about two weeks. You said you're going to be the, the CEO of the Air Force Aid Society, which is, you know, uh, um, a great charity for, for those out there that are watching. That's where the Falcon loan comes from that a lot of first sergeants utilize, you know, or Falcon grants for, for airmen who are in need in the United States Air Force. So it's, I'm sure there's other, and there's other avenues, you know, for education, uh, just people in general who need help in the United States Air Force and family members. So that's a, a great organization. And I advise a lot of you, if you do shop at the exchange, you can donate all year round now to both the Army Emergency Relief and the Air Force Aid Society when you go to check out. So that's a plug for, for, for Chief Wright, who's going to be the next CEO. So I'm sure he'll be plugging that in yeah, yeah. <laughs> when, he does this, when he does this tour. So you can donate all year round online too. I just bought something online. It's, you know, it's a worthy charity. It's airmen taking care of airmen. And that's what, that's what the Air Force Aid Society is. So if you get a chance, you got a few bucks to spare, 10 cents to spare. We accept all currency. Just go on there, click it, and, uh, you know, donate. Donate because it's just you taking care of fellow airmen. So And Chief, not... don't forget, we also had a chief chat with Lieutenant General Retired Hopper last week. And... General Mason as well. Um, so you guys can go back and check out that. Uh, there's a lot of great information about those organizations in that chief chat. He left some good advice for you, Chief, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he left some good. He's, they're looking forward, uh, you know, to you coming on the team. He said the team's looking forward to you coming on the team. And, you know, uh, basically, 
he didn't want to say, he, he didn't want to say, but he said it's going to be a breath of fresh air because he's been there 15 years. So you're going to be a breath of fresh air to the organization. Um, but you know, he's sad. He's envious, of course, but he's happy that you're you're going to fill the role. Yeah. Thanks, man. General so, Hopper is yeah. great. <laughs> so, so leader. He is General Hopper, great guy. Great. And they all, him and General Mason, they go back and forth with some great stories. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> so I'm sure you're general. It was a good, good, good chat. chat. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. Have you met General Mason? Chief I haven't. Mason? I haven't met him. <laughs> you're gonna hear some stories. <laughs> He's he's good. He's a good he's a good guy. He, he'll tell he's you the history. He's fun, energetic guy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're nice. gonna like him. You're gonna like him. But uh, to to my point here, right? What advice you're leaving soon? So, what advice do you have for Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force? Who will be Chief Master of the Air Force? Joanne Bass who will become 19th Chief Master of the Air Force. Yeah. So you know, I I uh, I try not to give too much advice, to be honest. And I know that sounds. Uh, uh, kind of crazy coming from a, a senior leader, but um, the the best advice I can give Joe is uh, to be her authentic self, uh, to do it the way that she wants to do it. Don't be concerned about me or or any of our predecessors. Uh, she has to be comfortable doing it doing it her way. Um, uh, and I she got selected for a reason because she's talented. She's smart. She's uh, engaging. She's a great communicator. She understands the issues because she helped me, you know, um, design the Air Force that that we have have today. So I'm not worried uh, about her at all. And like I said, the only advice I would give her is, hey, man, do you right? Do it your way. Have a good time. Uh, Never forget where you came from Uh, because these these jobs can go to your head, right? So humility is a, is a huge part of being a senior leader, but uh, I think she's gonna do great. And I'm looking forward to just kind of watching her from the sidelines. I, I agree. And you know, you, you've made so many, you know, changes, you know, to the force, PME, uh, EPRs, et cetera. There's so many, there's a list of accolades, right? We can list down. You can probably fit up a whole Wikipedia page with everything you've done. Is there something, uh, is there a goal or something you wish you would have started working on for the force that you haven't? you haven't got around to or did you mission accomplished checklist checked off no um so i'm a little bit torn on questions like this because you know i i i believe in living with no regrets right so um i, I like the way my career played out i like the way my time as the chief master sergeant air force played out uh do i wish you know a couple of things could have got gotten done um that's still in the works uh you know yeah but mostly i'm happy with you know uh, the decisions that we made and, and how we uh, progressed and moved the Air Force forward. Um, you know, one of the things that we have been working on was uh, two things. Uh, one is a bereavement leave, and that's where uh, leave that allows people when they have catastrophic things happen in their life, they lose a, a brother or a sister or parent or, or what have you that we could grant them military time to go home and settle the affairs uh, of their family as it stands right now, they have to use their own leave. There are some of them that fall into an emergency leave category, but mostly uh, airmen have to burn their own leave. Ask them, and, and on the surface, it doesn't seem like, okay, you earn leave, you should, you know, that's one of the things you should use it for. But when you compare it to um, the uh, 20 or so other things that we allow, we give government time off for, like buying a house or getting LASIK surgery or playing in a basketball tournament, which I did for almost my entire career. I traveled around the world on government time playing basketball, um, but yet someone who loses a child or sibling, you know, they have to burn their own leave. So we've been working on that. That's something that I really wish we, we could have uh, gotten done. And then the other thing is, uh, the joint custody uh, initiative, because we have many um, folks in the Air Force today who have children together, uh, but aren't married, either have never been married or have, have gotten a divorce. And, and to give them an opportunity, just an opportunity, no guarantees, but an opportunity to be assigned in the same place for the purpose of raising a child together is an initiative that we've been working on that we haven't been able to get across the board just yet. Uh, still got two weeks, so we'll we'll. we'll see. <laughs> yeah. I remember uh, I received a message, right, a private message on my Facebook, and uh, somebody asked me specifically that question. I was like, "Oh, I, I, 
I'm the senior advisor for the exchange. Hold on. So I forwarded it to, to you and it went to your team. And then yeah. I got a reply and I was like, well, here's a reply. And, and you know, the, the young lady, I can't remember, she was a master sergeant. She was just very happy that it was being looked into. But she yes. was like, you know, I, you know, I don't have a problem with my, with, with, you know, the, 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 the baby's father. We just, you know, we're in the military together. We had a child, you know, we don't want to get married, um, but it'd be great if we could stay together. And, yeah. and, you know, times have changed. Things have changed. Everybody doesn't have to be married these days. So why not provide an opportunity for them to have joint custody, which I think it's, you know, yeah. hopefully you go, I think both of these, there's no doubt they're going to go through. Yeah. I mean, just the opportunity right? alone, I think is, is all we're asking for. Again, there's, there's no guarantees. If there's a slot for both people and Correct. it doesn't cause any other uh, damage, then we should be willing to do that for them. But, um, you know, other, other than those two, you know, I really just uh, try to look back and, and think, Hey man, we, we did the best we could with what we had and Joe will have a whole different set of circumstances. And I've, I've already encouraged her uh, again, don't worry about what I think or what I feel you keep doing um, what you think is right. And things that, that uh, you want to get rid of that we did, you know, feel, feel free, no, no harm, no foul, no love lost, because here's what I can tell you, man, about leadership in the end, nobody will remember any of that stuff, right? Nobody will remember, what we changed and what change, you know, what processes or programs we changed, what they'll remember will be, you know, how they felt about how we treated them. And, um, you know, for me, as long as people can say, man, K Wright was a great dude, man, he was always smiling. Uh, he treated us with kindness and, and respect. Uh, he never forgot where he came from and he was just all around good dude, man. That's, that's my legacy. I'm happy. All that other stuff, because, you know, every chief is going to change it back. Right. I just all I did was change some of the stuff that <laughs> some of my predecessors had already changed. And we just keep changing each other, each other stuff back and forth. <laughs> you know? so, hey, so, 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 Chief, right. Let's have some fun here. Right. You know, uh, I get tagged a lot on a lot of posts when it comes to exchange stuff. So I look at other comments. So what are your thoughts? You're leaving now. Let's get to it. Ball, I'm going to go three things. Beards, what's up with beards? Let's just ask it. Number two, ball caps for OCPs. And number three, why don't we just change these name tags to blue? The Space Force was just like, you know what? Screw that. We're going to blue. Just, just why, why is that? It's so fun, you know, your last two weeks. So what could you say about those? <laughs> yeah, so so I, I stand in the same place. I've always stood on, on, on beards. Uh, clearly I'm a black guy, right? And so I've had to, to bite, to, I mean, to, to fight with pseudo folliculitis, Barbe, uh, shaving bumps, you know, all my, all my adult life and, and career. Uh, but it came a, a point where I had to learn how to shave, right? I, I think I'm probably like the average person who has some uh, lesser form of, of uh, pseudo uh, that with proper shaving techniques and taking care of your skin, you can actually, you know, figure out uh, how to shave. Uh, but I do recognize that, that there are some of us um, who have some um, conditions that just don't allow them to shave. And I'm okay with those, those people having shaving waivers, but uh, at least not between now and August 14th, beers won't be a, 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 a thing in the, in the, in the Air Force. Um, I, I, I just, uh, from a personal standpoint, uh, I, I, don't, I don't, one thing that I don't trust is that like right now, we don't have enough leaders um, that uh, make sure that folks who have shaving waivers are within grooming standards. And so if we just said, hey, anybody can wear a beard, man, we'd be like, it'd be insane, man. You got LeBron James beards and, and everything. So um, I also wasn't a fan of ball caps. I like the ball caps and the AOR, um, but uh, just walking around, uh, whether you're here in the DMV or at any other base, I, I didn't think they uh, were right fit and, and professional uh, looking enough. Um, but I also, uh, you know, I'm, I'm open to, I know we've had some, uh, particularly females who, who have uh, thicker, thicker hair that the ball caps uh, work better. So, you know, in the grand scheme of things, uh, I'm okay with if, if uh, we decide to go with with ball caps in garrison and not just in the in the AOR. Again, uh, I guess it doesn't look any any worse than some of the ratty looking uh, <laughs> uh, watch caps that we that that we have uh, right now. So, 
And then uh, what was the other one? Ball caps, beards, and the name tapes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, you know, looking back on it, man, I wish we would have just went to blue. But part of the challenge when we were, you know, when we first decided to go to to the OCP uh, uniform was we didn't want to uh, look too much like the army, and and we just we felt like at the time that the blue was so close to the black that it was going to be hard uh, to distinguish. But uh, hindsight being twenty. 2020, uh, I think we could have just went went with the blue. Now the Space Force is is uh, is uh, taking on the blue, and mm -hmm. and uh, so we're doing some things. And you guys are probably pretty aware of the things that we've been doing with the name taste the backgrounds on the name tapes to make them jump out uh, a little bit more. I actually like the Spice Brown. Uh, I got some Army friends who who kid me about the uh, Army Colonel. Every time I see him in the Pentagon, he says, "Hey, Spicy Brown, what's going on?" <laughs> It's, I do think, uh, so, you know, these are, there's, I think there's seven colors in these uniforms and on these name tapes. So they moved it now to three colors. So the spice brown stands out more. Uh, I hope it helps, but to be, I, I'll be honest, I, I walk around sometimes, I'm like, especially the rank, I'm like, man, I can't, what is that over there? I can't tell. I have to get, once I get up close, I'm like, oh, okay. How yeah. you doing, sir? <laughs> it's a little tough, but hopefully it works out with the new change uh, to the tricolor background. So the spice brown actually stands out. And then yeah. here's another question for you. As a, as a board member, if there's one thing you wish the exchange did, what would it be now? Now that you're off the board, what would it be you, one thing you wish the exchange did or could do? If there's one thing, and I, and I, and I, was, I had been pretty vocal about this since I came on, is, is um, uh, develop a, an, an easy to use app that would make it as easy as uh, for our shoppers as it is for uh, those of us who use Amazon. I mean, Amazon is just so easy and so convenient um, that I wish AFES could get at least uh, something close to that where I can just open up the app, find what I want, order it, and then two days, it's, or in some cases, the same day, it's on my, on my doorstep. And I think until we can uh, uh, compete at that level um, with uh, online retailing, um, it, it'll present some, 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 uh, some challenges with, you know, how often people choose to shop at AFES and, and, um, and then, um, you know, I also uh, talked about, um, you know, the difference between AFES.com and then uh, Shop My Exchange, um, um, I think, uh, in terms of just having one place to go to, to be able to because I, I still get confused. Uh, you know, I go on AFES.com and I'm trying to sign in and register and, and buy something. It's like, oh, no, you got to go on this this, uh, this, other, this other website. So uh, I think just technology, and I know there's some um, uh, CEO, Tom, Mr. Scholl has talked about, you know, hey, well, Amazon spends like uh, a couple of billion dollars a year on their uh, IT stuff, and, and we just don't have that funding. And so, so I, I certainly understand that. But uh, I think that would just propel AFES uh, really in, uh, in a lot of ways if we could get, um, you know, make it easier for folks to, to shop uh, online. So they did, uh, they did include in that digital garrison app that soon, you know, they're working on it with the, with the, with the Army and it's going to cover a lot for the Air Force. There is, the, there is a shopping portion in there now. Uh, they're working on it. it, you know, slowly but surely, they're getting there. Will it get to Amazon levels? You know, maybe throughout the years, um, it'll get there, but they're slowly working on it. So hopefully, hopefully as you're retired, you're sitting at the AFAS at your desk, you know, you're able to go to shopmyexchange.com or on your phone, you know, oh, look, the exchange has, has this on sale. Let me click it. And we'll see in a couple of years, maybe you'll be able to do all that. Yeah. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Yeah. But otherwise, other than that, man, I love everything about AFES. I love, um, oh, I'll tell you one thing I wish. I wish they bring golf clubs back into, into the larger uh, <laughs> AFES. I, I used to go to Fort Belvoir and, and uh, they had a pretty nice selection of golf clubs. And, and I don't think any of the stores actually sell uh, golf clubs anymore. But. I have not seen golf clubs, but if the buyer's watching, hey, you heard it right here. Chief Master on the Air Force wants some golf clubs. That can be big stores, all right? <laughs> I'm sure they got rid of them because nobody was buying them. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> That's actually, you know who that is? That's Dan Coglin. He does the sports. So he's actually the MCS. He's the one who runs all the MCSs. So yeah. we'll send a note to Dan. <laughs> but I, hey, but I love the Kohans. You guys are doing great. Like Kohan, that's my favorite shoes. And yeah. We always got good deals on Kohans and 
And uh, you got great brands on polo and, and uh, you know, all the other different clothing uh, stuff that I like. So, you know, great. It's, it's just a wonderful opportunity, man. Oh, well, thank you. Shout out to those buyers, to the, to the soft lines buyers out there. <laughs> Chief Wright, all good stuff. So you're active on social media. Where can viewers go to follow you on Twitter and Instagram? Um, you know what? I, I don't know what my Twitter, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Chief Master Sergeant Air Force 18 at Chief Master Sergeant Air Force number 18. And then uh, Instagram, it should be the same thing. So um, yeah, I try to try to stay pretty, pretty active. And uh, just because I understand that's where young people, uh, not just young people, a lot of people go to, they depend on social media to, to, to connect. And uh, I'm a little bit different uh, than some of my old school uh, colleagues. I do believe that you can use um, social media and other uh, virtual forms to establish meaningful relationships. I, you know, I, when one of the things that I've been trying to do was to uh, improve our uh, list evaluation system, our appraisal system, and introduce some technology into it, and, and everybody you know, was saying that, oh man, you need good old fashioned face-to-face -face, and that's the way you build relationships and stuff. And until I reminded them that, hey, we only meet like once a quarter, every other um, conversation that I have with you guys is through Zoom or email or telephone or something besides face-to-face. -face. And we seem to be pretty, pretty close. So, um, um, you know, I, I, I just, I, I can just appreciate the, the fact that you can reach so many people across the, the planet um, through the use of social media. So I encourage uh, folks that when they can. And and for leaders, you gotta do what's comfortable for you, right? If you're not comfortable using social media, you know, then, then don't use it. Um, but there are some, a lot of good benefits, I think, to it, so. I think, I think you're right. You know, I went on, I go on to Air Force, uh, what is it, Quarantine University? Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty good site. A lot of you know, a lot of nuggets being dropped out there. Uh, they're hosting a lot of Zoom invites with a lot of leaders across the Air Force to talk about issues you know facing the force. So totally agree. You could do it just like this. Maybe it's not in person, but for sure, you know, you, you have this dialogue, and you know, you're, you're meeting people online, people you probably would have never met if you were just at your installation. Yeah, right. That. There there actually is some science and some research that you know. So so when people say Hey, I, there's, I need to see your face. I need to look into your eyes. I need to, you know, all, all this other stuff. Um, I, I, one of my favorite books of all time is Malcolm Gladwell's Talking to Strangers. And um, in this book and, and, and several other um, kind of pieces of research that I've done, this idea that we can read people just by looking into their eyes and, and by seeing the expressions on their face is not not necessarily always true. Sometimes that's how we make mistakes. Uh, some people just all their life, they've looked up and to the left when they are pondering a question, but we've been taught that when somebody looks up and left, it means they're lying, right? And so um, sometimes, you know, and he has research in his book that, that uh, where he uses FBI investigators, I mean, seasoned professionals, uh, that get it wrong, right? All the things that we've ever been taught about how to tell when someone is, is, is telling the truth. Um, he, the, the average person who has no experience in, in, in interrogating someone, uh, they get it right about 50%. And uh, the best interrogators in FBI and uh, investigators, same thing, about 50%. They can only get it right about, about 50%. So um, again, I push back on this. Hey, I got to be sitting right in front of you to establish a meaningful relationship and really get to know you on any um, on, on any level. And <clears throat> um, so, yeah, I would I just uh, I love that we've gone to technology and how much uh, time, effort and energy it, 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 it saves us from having it all come together and, and meet all the time. Uh, that's it. Well, I was going to ask, you know, before we say goodbye, is there anything else you'd like to share with Airmen? and other service members watching today. So you yeah, kind one, of said all that, but go ahead, please. Yeah, the one thing that I would tell uh, everybody is, uh, hey man, be dreamers, right? I'm a, I'm a guy from a small town, Columbia, Georgia, who was a dental tech and became the chief master sergeant in the Air Force. It doesn't seem very, very likely. And, and so um, be dreamers, man, dream big, 
Uh, now, there is a need to focus small, right? If you're an A1C or a senior airman watching this right now, you can't become the chief messenger of the Air Force in two weeks. Um, so you do have to focus on the small steps that you need to, to get there. But I just encourage people to, to dream big, right? The world is your oyster. You just kind of got, got to decide what it is that you want out of life. And, and like um, Paulo Coelho says in the, in the Alchemist, once you decide, the entire universe conspires to help you achieve it. And so I just love to see young people who have big dreams and big goals and, and uh, decide early what they want uh, out of life and then drive toward it. Um, you know, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to get knocked down, uh, like Dwayne Wade says. So you get knocked down seven times, you get up eight. You know, all of that, that stuff that, that, that you hear, I mean, that stuff is, is real, man. But uh, and it, it, it just begins with being dreamers. Well, you heard it here, Chief Master Sergeant Air Force, right? Thanks again for spending time with us today. We wish you the best uh, on your next gig as the Air Force A Society CEO. Of course, congratulations on your retirement and thank you for your years of service, not only to the Air Force, but of course to this great nation. I appreciate it. I know everyone out there, all the airmen and even those not in the Air Force, right? Family members, soldiers, sailors, Marines, we appreciate everything you've done for us. Uh, it's truly been an honor to talk with you today. We appreciate your support. So remember everyone, like Chief Wright said, right? Uh, be dreamers and be grateful and life will be good to you. So keep it up, exchange out. All right, thank you. Bye, thank Bye. you. <laughs>